Okay, this is the Tech 2. I'm going to program a computer. It's a engine computer, PCM, from a 96 Chevy Malibu. It's connected to a battery and it's wired for just programming. Okay, so currently we are not connected to the computer and I'm going to do it the regular way first. So we turn on the tech tape, powers up. <clears throat> We're getting power from the battery through the data link connector. Okay, I'm going to go to the main menu, service programming system, request info. Okay, it's just going to make sure that you've got the latest software, which we do, and I'm going to hit continue. Okay, I'm going to Chevy. Ninety-six passenger car. Turn off all power, but of course, because we're not actually on a car, we can just go ahead and hit continue. It's now going to read the VIN. That's our VIN. That's the current software color vibration. Is the VIN correct? Because I wrote the VIN number on the computer. We know that it's correct. So I'm going to hit yes. Turn off the ignition. Turn off the Tech 2 and connect the Tech 2 to the PC. Okay, so I'm going to power it off. I'm now going to plug in the connector for the serial data. And I'll turn on Tech 2 again. It'll go through its self check. Okay. Now on the computer, we go to Service Programming System. We're going to do a regular Tech 2. We're going to reprogram, replace and reprogram because it won't reprogram to a calibration that's already in the computer. Click Next. It's communicating with the Tech 2. Okay, you now see turn off the computer, remove the existing controller from the vehicle, and install a new controller to be programmed. Click Next. It tells you to connect the Tech 2 to the computer after you've requested the information, which we already did. And click Next. It's now going to request from the Tech 2 the vehicle identification number. Here, that's what it's doing. Okay, it's finished. It pulled up the VIN number. Click next. Okay, we're going to reprogram the powertrain control module. We're going to do a normal programming. I'm going to click next. These are some service boot bulletins that we could view if we wanted to. This is all the different calibrations. This is what each calibration has fixed. Okay, this is our latest calibration, which connects a false DTC of P0401 after a long deceleration, referring to the bulletin number 876022. That just happens to be something for this car. Okay, so we always want to put in the latest software, unless directed by the bulletin, the hotline, which will give you a VCI number, which you don't want to do if you don't have to. Click next. Click next. And now what it's going to do is now going to load the software calibration into the Tech 2. Okay, you can see that's what it's doing. It's now downloading it directly into the Tech 2. Okay, normally you wouldn't hook it up to the vehicle power. You would use the power at the bottom of the unit to plug it into the wall. It's downloading the information. It's almost finished. It's done. So now you're going to ensure that the proper voltage is in the vehicle. And this is if you're doing it in the vehicle. You make sure your battery is charged. I will hook, always hook up a battery charger when I'm reprogramming a car. You're going to connect the tech to the vehicle. You're going to then go back into service programming. And you're going to go ahead and follow the instructions there. Okay, so we can close that out. We can leave that there. We can disconnect the data line that goes to the back of the computer. We would then connect it to the computer 
to the vehicle, or in this case, the ECM. Okay, we hit enter. We go back to service programming. And now you can see we have a, a menu there for program the ECU. I'm going to hit that. This is we check the VIN. This is our software calibration that we want to load. We go ahead and press continue. Again, it's going to warn you to make sure the battery is fully charged and continue. Okay, now I'm going to read the VIN. And now it's going to go ahead and perform the software update to the ECM or PCM or you know, whatever you're doing. And you can see it's loading progress directly into the PCM. Alright, it takes a couple minutes. This is an older controller, so it's not a big soft calibration, so it doesn't take all that long. You see, we're already one quarter done. But this will work with any controller. I'm not using the candy module on this because it doesn't need it. It's much, much older to be canned. I only hook up the candy module if I need it. This controller doesn't need it. Okay, it's 100% done. It's going to check it. It says it's okay. Programming was successful. We click continue. Okay, and you can see we went right back to that original mode. So I will hit exit, go back to the same menu. Um, usually what I'll do at this point is you always want to cycle the key. So I will disconnect the battery in this case. Reconnect the battery. Power the tech 2 back on. Now I'll go in and go into Diagnostics, select the year of the vehicle, which is a 1996, it's a passenger car, I'm going into powertrain, select the motor, the event on this one is M, which is 3.1 liter, okay, um, and body, um, you need to pull Diagnostics, I always go into Data Stream, now, because this computer is not connected to anything, you're going to see funky numbers. 1,000 RPMs, minus 39 degrees engine coolant temperature, minus 39 degrees intake, mass airflow frequency, um, mass airflow grams per second. You know, they're going to be wild because basically the, nothing's connected except for the data link connector and the power in the grounds. Okay, this is, a, this is an off-board programmer that I had built years ago. Um, and that's why I know that it works. Okay, and that's how you do that type of controller. So now let's exit out of here. Now if you're going to do a pass-through, you start at your Tech 2 screen. You connect the computer to the Tech 2. You connect the Tech 2 to the car, or if you have an off board programmer, you can go ahead and do that. And like I said, I built this off port programmer years ago and I actually have one for a new computer for a Camaro that uses the MDI but we're not going to go through that because this is for the Tech 2 and the MDI you would use TIS to web not the standalone TIS 2000 program alright go back into service programming this time we're going to select pass through replace and reprogram next Okay, it's going to ask us the information for the car. And this information for an older car like this is really pretty general. And you can see this, this TISTA web goes all the way to 2007. So you don't need to pay for online subscriptions. You just need to get your hands on this disk and a dongle or a dongle simulator. Passenger car, and that's all it asks. It doesn't care about the car line because it's really the, the, the software calibration is so small okay next make sure the battery is full connect the tech to the vehicle 
Connect the RS-232. Switch that to on. Next. Next. And it's basically going to be the same as before, except instead of going from the computer to the Tech 2, it's going to go from the computer to the Tech 2 to the PCM all in one shot. Um, this works if you have a laptop. Um, usually I'll do it the first way I did it, only because that's the way I learned how to do it when I was in the dealership. This will work too, but this will also work for... Um, a Drew Technologies Mongoose cable. It will work for a any any universal programmer. You would use the same thing. You just have to install the drivers to work. And I've used the Mongoose cable before, and it works pretty good. And it works just like this. It's just like a pass through, except instead of picking pass through, you'll pick the Mongoose cable, and then it will automatically know to do the pass through. And now it's reprogramming like it was before. You can see the Tech 2 is doing its thing like it was before. Except this time, it's going directly from the computer through the Tech 2 to the controller to program it. You know, um, I was asked this to, to know if it would do it or not. And I knew it would do it. I've just never done it like this before. Only because I wouldn't buy a Tech 2, spend the money for a Tech 2, to do a pass-through programming. If I was going to pay for something for pass-through programming, I would buy a Universal Programmer, one of the good ones. Drew Technology has one for about uh, $1,680. That will do not just the GM controllers, but Ford and Chrysler and Toyota and Honda. And, you know, it's a Universal Programmer, so if you're going to spend that much money for a pass-through, you might as well get one that's going to do them all. You know, the software subscription is the same whether you're using a Tech 2 or a Universal Pass-Through. So that's why I never did it like this. I always did the plug it into the car, pull up the information, then program the Tech 2, bring it back to the car with just the Tech 2 and do it that way. Um, maybe I'm just stubborn, I don't know. Alright, so we're hitting 100%. It's telling me I'm finished, programming complete, you close. Okay, we go over to the Tech 2, we see we're back at the welcome screen. I'm going to disconnect the RS-232 cable. I will go ahead and cycle the key like I did before. And when I say cycle the key, I mean disconnect the battery. Um, power it up. Next power, there's power. Power it up. Press enter, diagnostics, 2007, and you can go either way in these menus and go up or you can go down, 2006 actually, passenger car, power train, VIN M for the, yeah, the eighth, and VIN N, okay, diagnostic trouble code, actually I don't want diagnostic, you want to die. let's go into diagnostic trouble codes real quick, um, DTC's info, waiting for data, and there's no diagnostic trouble codes, which is kind of odd because it's not connected to anything, right? You think to yourself, well, there should be codes in there, right? Um, well, no, because it doesn't actually start looking for codes until you try to crank the car. Okay, data display, engine data, engine data one. Like I said before, I do this just to make sure everything worked fine, and now it's fine. You can put this controller into a car, preferably a 96 car, because then you won't blow things up when you connect the connector to it, and it'll start and run the vehicle just fine. Okay, and that's how you use the TIS 2000 to program a controller. Um, TIS 2000 is a, the standalone version. TIS to web is the current version, and that's what you want to use. They stopped putting out the disk in about 2008, I believe it was. Um, and now you have to go to TIS to web um, to get the calibrations. Uh, you can pay for it for I believe it's three days, uh, a month, or a year if you needed to. Um, so that's not bad. And if it's a customer's car, you just charge them what it costs to do the three-day thing, which is the way I've done it in the past with customers. Uh, if you have access to it or you have a friend who works in a GM dealership and they'll borrow, you'll let them borrow your pet their password, you can do it that way. All right.
Thanks for watching.